Welcome back to the show. Check out these headlines. Ripple, did they just announce that they're gearing up for U.S. movement of payments? Is there a new rollout that's about to take place? (laughs) Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow us on Twitter and YouTube for exclusive content. Right now, it's $1.72 trillion market cap for cryptocurrency. The market is up 1.5%, 42700 plus for Bitcoin, 2200 plus for Ethereum. And we have $96.3 billion plus for Tether market cap. Number six spot is XRP at $0.50. Cents. We're up 0.9 on the 24-hour. We're off by 3.1 on the seven-day. Let's get into the range of price very quickly here as we're ranging between 0.496 three on the bottom 0.5103 on the top we're at 49 cents just shy of 50 cents ladies and gentlemen is where we are this morning and i want to remind all of you your access to private investment invest in leading startups with affordable minimums and i mean the most affordable minimums minimums in the entire private equity game Broadening investment opportunities for all. Now over 667,000 registered users. What are you waiting for? They just got new blocks of Ripple on the board. They're not going to last long. Do not mess around, ladies and gentlemen. They have Circle. If it's still available, make sure you go get it. Circle's already filed their S1. How much longer are you going to have the opportunity to get that? How much longer are you going to have the opportunity to get ripped? I mean, all of it is so exciting and it's so incredible because Link2 does the right job of getting and grooming the best companies that are helping to build out the growth industries that we're all headed towards in this new digital revolution from fintech to AI to blockchain. It's all on here. Click the link to the sponsor below and get yourself some private equity. Mm Mm-hmm. Bankrupt FTX won't be restarting, but former customers will get money back in full. Now, there's the right answer. And why did it take so long to get that right answer? I tell you, you know, it's so creepy how many times we watched them try to Kevin O'Leary and others. Oh, I I would back Sam again. Uh, It was a mistake. He uh, just didn't know what he was doing. I would just want someone else to look at the money. You know, remember all of that? That happened. I mean, not only did that guy say that, he said that knowing he was being recorded. That to me shows just how much they were after profit for order, payment for order flow, right? They wanted to put themselves in front of every transaction if they could. That's why FTX was going around and dumping money into everything, including Capitol Hill. <laughs> Meanwhile, just to give everybody the refresher here, we know that the first of the month we see an escrow release. Ripple locks up $800 million after releasing only $600 million. And this is just to understand that there's a release every month. They use a certain amount for operating expenses, expanding operations, and put the rest on the back end of the escrow account. This is a very big piece of news right here, ladies and gentlemen. And we got to give credit where credit's due. Shout out to Patrick McHenry and all of the other congressional officials that back this. Mike Flood, Wiley Nickel, Senator Lummis for their leadership. Chair Gary Gensler, SAB 121, has virtually blocked banks from serving as custodians of digital assets. Well, now with the help of all of these members of Congress and... The one and only the Chamber of Digital Commerce. Shout out to Cody Carbone and everybody over there in that camp. Because the incredible bipartisan work here, SAB 121 will be nullified after it passes both houses and signed by the President of the United States. CRA resolutions only need 51 votes to pass the Senate. And this is important, and it's important because... We know that there was a feature in here that if you had a hundred bucks, they were forcing the banks to hold a hundred bucks of something else on the books. 
outside of the assets that you had. And that's why it was not attractive to the banks. But now that's going to be gone. So now you're opening up banks to custody. <laughs> yeah. This is why you want those lobbyists working on Capitol Hill. Look, this is why I tell you, come to XRP Las Vegas. You are going to love the experience, for one. I'm telling you, if you haven't come. And if you have, talk to somebody who's already already been. You're going to find out. But this is why it's so important, why we're uh, working to support the Chamber of Digital Commerce with the Benefit Dinner, where you can have private dinner with Brad Garlinghouse. And it's a tax deduction. Because this is the kind of efforts they're doing every single day when you're not aware of it to make sure that the innovation of this tech space is not crushed by people like Elizabeth Warren and others. Meanwhile, stablecoin issuer Circle expands its native issuance of stablecoin USDC to the CELO network. CELO Ecosystems looks to boost cross-border payments and peer-to-peer transactions in developing regions. C-Labs, an organization dedicated to the CELO ecosystem development, will propose a community vote to enable paying transaction fees in the USDC stablecoin. More interoperability, more expansion. There won't be one to rule them all, right? And then J.P. Morgan analysts published a report about USD Tether, explaining that they are concerned for some reasons. Going into this, the report underlined Tether's lack of regulatory compliance and transparency and stated that its increasing concentration was seen as a negative for the stablecoin universe and the overall crypto ecosystem. Now, companies operating stablecoin face regulatory risk globally in the U.S. The Clarity for Payment Stablecoins Act is awaiting approval from Congress. Meanwhile, Europe expects partial implementation of crypto assets markets MICA regulation in June of this year. Analysts believe the stablecoin companies that strictly adhere to the existing regulations can benefit from the upcoming regulatory scrutiny, potentially gain market share. Now, as you would want to know, right, the, new, the former CTO, Paolo Adorno, responds to J.P. Morgan's report saying he was pleased that J.P. Morgan recognized the importance of Tether and the stablecoin technology created by his company, but he found it hypocritical for J.P. Morgan, the world's largest bank, to talk about centralization. Well, that might, that might be a nice zinger for an article, But there's a reason why the Secret Service has partnered with USD Tether. Secret Service was created to chase down counterfeit counterfeit money money makers. I'm not saying Tether would go away. I'm just saying, you know, uh, if you were doing things the right way, the Secret Service wouldn't be partnering with your ass. Now, here's evidence here, never before seen video, the first wallet to wallet transfer of the Palau stablecoin using a Ripple payment app, ladies and gentlemen. This is super, super cool. And if you look at this, and I'll just bring it down, you can see the change getting ready to go on here, sending it over. Look at that Ripple payment app right there. How cool is that? And of course, like anywhere in the world, the internet connection. Everything relies on the internet connection. Can we turn Starlink on, please? Can we do that? Money sent. Money sent. And money received, ladies and gentlemen. Here it comes right here. So you can see, even with the slow internet connection, it's all coming through. It's working. It's super, super exciting. There it is, right there. So. First ever transaction. Shout out to uh, shout out to Jay Hunter Anson for sharing that. But this brings us to what is currently getting ready to go, unfold for 2024. And I tell you, we got the early predictions in January from Ripple, Monica Long, Brendan Barry, and multiple other executives at Ripple, and they were super bullish. And it hasn't changed one bit. Uh, Raul Advani from Ripple says this week's APAC Policy Digest features a summary of Ripple X uh, TRM Labs Roundtable on DeFi as regulatory updates. And we go into the regulatory updates very quickly here just to get to those. Taking a turn around the world here, Raul Vani uh, tells us that the Australian Prudential Regulation Authority updates its policy priorities for the first half of 2024, which includes a consultation of Prudential Prudential treatment. It, I, I, this is what I'm saying. 
Don't let four and a half, five years of understanding that the same problem is the same problem. Don't let it become something else. This is not about developers in a basement versus a large corporation. That is absolute childish nonsense. This is about clarity. It's about clarity around the world. Securities and Futures uh, uh, Commission warned public suspicious crypto-related activities here. It says here, Bank of Japan CBDC Forum met to provide updates on their pilot program. Financial Supervisory Services Reconstructing Crypto Fraud uh, Reporting Centric Center of Including Market Manipulation and Other Unfair Trading Practices. Singapore Police Force. Cybersecurity Agency of Singapore. Bank of International Settlements. The Effects of Stablecoins, right? International Organization Securities Commission, the IS, uh, IOSCO, all of these players, the World Federation Exchange, right? He's got it right here. Everything's right here. This is what they're watching out for, and it's what I'm watching out for, too. Because I know once you get regulation, financial institutions, banks, developers in their mom's basement, everybody's coming. But they want to come after they know that there's clarity and they're not going to be chased down. And they know that they don't want a free fake pass like Ethereum had. We want to do it the legitimate way, the way we've been doing it. And then there's this. Awesome announcement by Ripple. Oh, you're going to love this. You're going to love this. After being relatively quiet for the past three years in the U.S. for Ripple payments, we're geared up to announce new product updates powered by our money transmitter license, MTLs, that cover the majority of the United States. To get the ball rolling, we're hosting a meetup for folks in fintech at our San Francisco headquarters. Join us for a light panel about Ripple's blockchain and payments outlook for 2024 featuring our heads of product, Brendan Berry, Pega Saltani, and moderated by USMD, Joni Z, and with our CTO, David Schwartz, joining. You know it will be fun. How about that? That's going to be on Wednesday, February 7th at 5 p.m. at the headquarters there. Uh, super excited to find out what they're gearing up to do as they've been relatively quiet for the past three years in the U.S. for Ripple payments. Does that mean we're about to not be so quiet in the U.S. for Ripple payments? I like it. What a year this is turning, shaping up to look like. And here we have from Dark Defender who says squeezed and squeezed for all aspects in the charts and now between 52 and 46 cents. Psych psychological tests for years. But XRP had an extraordinary technical move in Elliott waves and it is developing the third wave and will prove it. I'm here to win and I will. Chop, chop, XRP is coming. As you can see, there's the chart right there. You can see the MACD right here. Right, you can see this where we are in the triangle. All of it's there. Let's take a look now at Egg Red Crypto as well. XRP destinies and unwavering targets. There's no escaping the target set. Fate cannot be twisted, but destiny does. Short-term struggles here. XRP faces resistance to favor certain incumbents, but it is destined to rule them all. Zooming in and simple breakdown is this. You want the long and short of it? Dark Defender and Egg Red Crypto give it to you. Low end, 41 cent. High end, 74 cent. Anything in between is just noise. But it sounds like we get above that 74 cent. We can start talking about an all-time high target above 384. Then $6.40, $13, $22, $27. Your destiny aligns with being in the top 1%. Just stay steady. The journey is destined for greatness. Man, do I love that. I hope you'll join us in the Freedom Zone, ladies and gentlemen, because we're going to get into it. We're going to get into it today. Politics is a real problem, but there's a bigger one. And we're going to discuss it inside the Freedom Zone. Because censorship is a very real thing I have combated for years. And if you want to help support the channel, you can do it by going to digperspectives.com clicking on the Freedom Zone, and come on in. Not financial advice from me or anyone else. I'll catch all of you 
on the next one.